If you are on Instagram and you're using it to market your coaching business, are you using Reels? When you do come up with a strategic plan and really plan out and be thoughtful about what type of content you're creating and why, then Instagram becomes fun again. So I have a question for you. If you are on Instagram and you're using it to market your coaching business, are you using reels? Now, if that question just triggered a whole bunch of anxiety, then you definitely want to stay right here because today I have got a guest with me who is going to help us all with this particular marketing tactic. And she is literally the perfect person for this job. I know that she's got a lot of amazing tips to share. So Car Brulhard is an expert in Instagram reels. With over eight years of experience as a social media strategist, Car launched KB Brand Marketing in January of 2021 to teach entrepreneurs and creators how to grow on Instagram organically. Since launching her business, Carr has grown her own audience from zero to 25,000 followers in under five months, and her reels have over 4 million views. So welcome to the show, Carr. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Awesome. Yeah, I know that you have got a ton of wisdom and tips and strategies and all the good stuff to share with us about Instagram in general and Instagram Reels in particular. So I can't wait to get into all of that. But before we do, I would love to hear a bit more about your story. Like what led you to doing this, to becoming a social media strategist? Good question. It's such a big (laughs) title that I'm like, well, I'm a social media strategist. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, it was a funny story. I actually was a tax accountant for close to five years right out of college before I even ventured into the marketing world. And the only reason I did was because I met my now husband on a random vacation in Puerto Vallarta on a rainy November And we just had an instant connection, kind of knew that we were the ones or whatever you want to call it. And two weeks later, I quit my tax job and flew to Australia to um, get to know him better. And then that ended up going really well. And so I moved to Berlin, Germany. And that's where I was lucky enough to start working with the United Nations World Food Program uh, as a social media manager to help them bring an app called Share the Meal to global markets. And that's how it started. And then, you know, eight years later, here I am uh, running my own consultancy. That's amazing. What a, what a journey. What, like literally and figuratively, like all over the world and very international, very glamorous. That's amazing. I love it. Okay, cool. So, so tell us, uh, you know, I'd love to talk about, in, well, actually, before we get to that, I would love to know, like, what, what does your business look like? So that was kind of the origin story, but what, what does your business look like now? Like, what are you doing now? Who are you working with? Tell me about that. Yeah, so I um, I was lucky enough that I worked for the UN doing social media, brand partnerships, PR, um, and doing omni-channel marketing. It wasn't just Instagram. Uh, and after that, we moved to New York City, and I had a brief stint in advertising tech. So I was working kind of on the agency side, seeing the buyer side of things, And then I was um, the first U.S. hire at a D2C vitamin subscription company as their head of social media and head of brand partnerships. So I had all this kind of experience working on, I'd say, all sides of kind of the marketing world, not for profits, ad tech, and then at a startup. And I the reason I started my my own business um, back in January 2021, so exactly a year ago almost, was because at the start of the pandemic, I actually lost my job because the startup closed due to COVID. And I happened to be nine months pregnant with our first child. And oh, wow. I lost my job. And two weeks later, I had our daughter. And so it really kind of was that giant push I needed to go out on my own, 
Like I didn't want to rely on anybody anymore. I'd had a few too many disappointments in my professional career that we won't go into today, but <laughs> it was all, you know, all these kind of failures and door closes and no's were the reason that I had the strength to start my own business, which at the beginning was very broad. I thought, okay, I've got all this knowledge from working at so many different places that I can offer like 20 different services and do done for you packages and do everything that people want and tailor things custom. And I quickly no learned and noticed that that was a little bit um, of a challenge and it wasn't really where my heart was. And so I quickly pivoted. And so within a couple of months, I was getting really specific. It, it moved from doing social media to just Instagram growth and Instagram strategy. And uh, long story short, I started in January 2021. And by March, I had 15,000 followers that really were a result from Instagram Reels. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, that's 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 some pretty powerful growth. Um, let's talk about Instagram Reels then. Like what what should coaches, you know, my audience, we, we in the health and wellness space, but most of us describe ourselves as coaches. Tell me what should coaches know about Reels? What do we need to know? So I think the first thing is that Reels, they've been around for almost a year and a half now, even though they still feel very new to us. It's been a product that Instagram has been really pushing, mainly to keep up with YouTube and TikTok as their biggest competitors. And so what people need to know is that there's a lot of noise surrounding Reels right now, especially from um, influencers, other kind of so-called coaches uh, about the fact that you need to be creating 30 reels in 30 days or posting six reels a week and all your content should be about reels. But what I teach is that we need to incorporate Instagram reels as one part of our overall content strategy on Instagram. So what I encourage health coaches or anyone in the wellness space is to think about how can they leverage the short form video to really hit their business objectives, whatever those be. Um, and, and just incorporate it into the rest of their content strategy, just as they would include um, an Instagram live or a carousel post or a single image. Reels has to fit inside of that puzzle. Right. I love that approach. That's refreshing for sure, because it can be because it is so in our face right now. Everything is all Instagram reels. It, that's how it seems. And so you start to think, OK, have I is has the game completely changed and all I need to do now is reels and I just have to get on board with this or get off the the wagon altogether. So I love that you're talking about it becomes part of your mixture of content creation. That's just one of like the the fundamental things about my business is that I really try to get rid of this overwhelm that's associated with Instagram because a lot of us are on Instagram and we're using it. We're in the early stages of our business and it just has this pressure to perform. And what we forget is that Instagram is not our entire business. There's so many other things involved in the entrepreneur journey that we don't have time to be dedicating hours and hours a day to Instagram. And so what I hope to do is to teach people that it doesn't have to be overwhelming when you do come up with a strategic plan and really plan out and be thoughtful about what type of content you're creating and why, then Instagram becomes fun again. And for the record, I know a lot of accounts that um, have gone really big. And I know we're kind of talking about followers here, which is not... Um, it's not the only measure of success. It's just something that we all kind of turn to. It's the first thing we notice when someone follows us is how many followers do they have? Yeah. Or even if you meet a friend and they give you their Instagram, you know, the first thing you notice is like, oh, wow, they've got 3,000 followers, or, you know? And so right. it's this exactly. thing that we do. But um, I know for a fact that you don't need reels to, to grow, but they certainly help, especially because... Um, we know Instagram is pushing this project or this product like crazy. Mm -hmm. And when we go into insights and take a look at the audience and traffic that's coming from reels, you're going to notice that a good chunk, and I'm talking like 60 to 75% of people seeing your reels are not following you. Mm, 
That's so valuable. Yes, because so much, I mean, I do hear this from my community a lot is that when they, you know, sort of pre reels era, I would say, is that they just feel like it's just an echo chamber. You just like, it's the same few people who are seeing and commenting and liking your post. And it's like, well, what's, you know, I kind of need to get out of that little bubble. So you're saying that Instagram Reels, so much of the traffic that you're going to get from that and the eyes on your work are brand new, fresh people who haven't seen you before. Yeah. So think about Reels almost like a free advertising space in Mm. a short form video. Um, I want you to take an approach that is this piece of content, if I were to see it for the first time, but I wasn't following Dr. Kim Foster, would I quickly kind of understand what your business was about? And would that piece of content give me enough reason to leave Reels, which is a huge ask, right? You know, when you're scrolling. So I'm going to (laughs) leave Reels, go to your profile, and then ideally check out your bio, go through your feed and go binge watch more Reels. Mm. And so we need to be thinking about how can we be repetitive in our messaging? Because that's something people forget to do is they're like, well, I already talked about my offering last week. Why would I talk about it again? I don't want to come across as salesy or, you know, overwhelm people with my offers. But the reality is that the more you talk about your offers, the more people are going to make associations with you and that pain point thereafter. And so I love reels for sales. I think they're such a fantastic way to um, convert and also to just drive brand awareness for your product or service. Mm, That's so smart. And I love how you actually said, be repetitive. Like this is actually a goal of creating content because I know that naturally we resist that. We're like, oh, I don't want to be that person who shows up and is like a one note tune, right? Like you're just always saying the same thing, but you really, it's actually part of your objective. You actually have to be repetitive because I mean, people only see a small percentage of like what you're putting out there, right? And so, yeah, it's so important to just constantly be repeating yourself. Even if you're feeling, and this is what I say to my clients all the time, if you're starting to get sick of hearing your own message on this, then you're doing it right. You're doing it right. If you're not sick of hearing it yet, you're not talking about it enough. And I even have to remind myself, you know, it, it's something, some some weeks I'm like, hmm, I haven't had any inquiries into my three-month, co- three-month coaching package or I haven't sold a course. And then I think like, oh, well, I haven't even talked about it in stories. I haven't talked about it in my reels or in my carousel posts. And the second I ramp up and I'm talking maybe two or three times a week, I book out my months. So Mm. really be aware of that. And you made a really good point that um, your followers even, only a certain percentage get shown our content, which in my opinion is a huge flaw of Instagram and a reason why a lot of people are leaving the platform and migrating elsewhere. And so um, I think it's exciting to know that there are some updates coming to the app, uh, supposedly in the first half of this year. We're still waiting and it's going to give us the option to decide what type of feed we get shown. So you'll get to decide between chronological, so your time-based feed, and then the algorithm-based feed, which is what we all have now. And then the third feed is going to be your favorites feed. So you're going to be able to start favoriting accounts and getting those prioritized, which is going to be really exciting. And um, it'll it'll just prove to us uh, who's seeing our content, who ha- who's not seeing it, who are most loyal kind of per- or fans. Um, purchasers are and hopefully leverage that to to the best of our ability. Mm, that's interesting. Okay, so more algorithm changes coming. That would be interesting to see how that rolls out. So, okay, we, if we're talking about creating reels, I know that this is a big hurdle for a lot of people who haven't yet kind of dipped their toes in the waters and they're feeling maybe, like you said before, overwhelmed with it. So what are some tips that you've got for creating reels in a way that doesn't take your entire work day and is actually moving the needle. It is actually useful. Yeah. So I think one thing is that we can get caught up in what Instagram shows us and they're primarily feeding us reels that have already overperformed and they're mm-hmm. coming from big accounts, influencers, people with teams, um, or just very talented creators. And 
it might seem like you need to invest in really expensive gear or cameras or um, have fancy transitions where you're like changing outfits or right. you're in Paris one day and New York City in the next frame. And <laughs> the reality is that, yes, all of those things certainly help to create an eye-catching video. However, they are really not necessary. And if you take a look at my reels, um, it wasn't until maybe three months ago that I started incorporating transitions and maybe changes in scenery. But I want people to know that to get rid of that overwhelm of just starting, and I started for the first time last December, and I was very insecure in front of the camera, uh, I started with stories. So I want you to practice going on stories and talking to the camera and really getting comfortable seeing yourself speaking, looking at all the little things, your mannerisms, and just letting go of it all because no one else is noticing except for you. So that's kind of one mindset trick. And then the next thing is that I want you to just make sure that your lighting is really good. Lighting can make or break a reel. And we know that Instagram, the algorithm values high quality and that one of those kind of contributing factors is that the lighting has to be good. So make sure you're in front of a window or if you've got a tripod, you, know, you can get a $40 tripod on Amazon and it's really going to make a difference. And um, don't forget to clean your camera lens. It's also going to help you have a better <laughs> video. You'd be surprised right. how dirty our cameras are, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're starting out with reels, Think about how can you create a reel where you're just talking? So you're sitting in front of the camera and you're going to keep it short, but think about what are some kind of golden nuggets that you could deliver in the form of an educational reel that your audience and your ideal or ideal client would be interested in learning from you. You've got to really believe that you are an authority, that you are the expert and your unique method of teaching or speaking or whatever that is, is what's going to draw people to you. So it's not copying, it's being yourself. I know that sounds very, very cliche, but it's really true. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, oh, I 100% agree. It's so true. And um yeah, I mean, people do get really caught up in like, you know, needing to, or just that anxiety about being on the camera and being like a deer in the headlights and not knowing yeah. what to say, right? But, um, and I love your tip about like, just watch it and then, and you'll see your manners. And I, I give that advice too. Like it's the best way to extinguish your own, like just, we all get that funny feeling when we watch ourselves on video, oh nobody likes to, or, and we don't like to hear our own voice, all of that stuff, but you just have to actually force yourself to watch and listen and just get over it. Right. Absolutely. Um, that's the best way to extinguish it. But okay. So then, so if we're, if we're going to keep it simple, but we need to do, we do need to pay attention to the quality is what I hear you saying. Like that the lighting and having it be decent quality doesn't have to be super fancy high level professional with all kinds of crazy transitions and things but but decent quality that you can manage the best that you can do right now um and then and just show up and be your actual self like being yeah. real yeah yeah and i think the other thing to really keep in mind which um it can be easy to overlook it might when i say it you're going to be like well yeah that makes sense but make sure that that reel is aligned to your niche or to your category or whatever it is that you are um, selling. Because if you're jumping on trends or doing dance videos or maybe doing a cute reel of your kids at dinner and you're a fitness instructor or you're a health coach, and that reel goes viral or you get a bunch of followers because of that one random trending reel, it's not going to serve you. So there's also this myth that virality means sales or virality means growth. And it's just not the case for, I would say, 95% of accounts that go viral. So I don't want you to chase virality. I don't want you to just jump on a trend because it's a trend, but rather I want you to think critically about how can you take a trend and apply it to you and your specific niche. And that's what I teach people um, in my course and in coaching sessions, um, because it, it's kind of difficult at first to, to figure out how to apply trends. But 
it, it's one of the biggest things that I can tell you is keep your pulse on what is trending and popular, but then put your own spin on it. Yeah, that you make such a good point because it is so easy to get caught up in wanting to get like that that sort of like dopamine hit of like a ton of people following us or liking it or seeing it or whatever, um, just for its own sake. But I mean, there's a lot of people out there. Do we need them all to be following us and and seeing our message? No, definitely not. You really, it needs to be way more strategic than that. You're, it's not just vanity metrics, like a whole bunch of numbers for no reason. You really do need the right people. So to your point, completely bang on is it's your, your content has got to be targeted to people who it's going to resonate with. And they're not just going to be watching it just for entertainment because it's going to lead them somewhere. So that's, that makes a ton of sense. So, um, okay. Well, what, speaking of, you know, myths, what other, like, are there other myths or mistakes that you see people making when they start to create reels? Um, I would say one thing that I notice a lot of people doing is that they think that they have to go and edit reels externally. That means outside of Instagram. And what the biggest kind of issues I have with that is absolutely, if you have been creating reels for a while and you're comfortable and you're ready to kind of take them the next level, that's what those other apps do. They help you incorporate transitions. Mm -hmm. They help you play with music and sound and um, do some fancy editing uh, where things can appear or disappear. And that's all good. But what I notice happening is that people that don't have a lot of experience go straight to another app And then they start messing around with text and adding non-native elements to their reels. And by non-native, I mean non-native to Instagram. And so when you're in Instagram scrolling and you're seeing, you know, everything that's been created within the app, and all of a sudden you see a reel that's perhaps the wrong size, so it's landscape, or perhaps it has a font that isn't an Instagram native font. Um... Things start to, I I have noticed, things start to stop performing at that level. Um, Another issue is repurposing your TikToks without removing the watermark or expecting that you can create content on TikTok and then it will perform on Instagram um, and vice versa across platforms. I've noticed that it just doesn't work for a lot of people. Some can get away with it. They're few and far in between. But uh, it's it's different. They're different algorithms and different people seeing that content on the platforms with different goals. And so you've got to be very mindful of how you're repurposing the content across, especially TikTok and Instagram, I'd say. Mm, those are good tips. I had no idea, you know, that 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 really makes a lot of sense though. So especially in the beginning, like just stay native to the platform. Use the use the Instagram editor in in Instagram itself just to create. Um and and it doesn't need to get don't need to be all fancy pants. <laughs> you just need to like yeah. make it simple, show up with your message, with your authentic message. And repeat that message again and again. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, very cool. So in terms of like, you know, is there, is there, I know that people are wondering like frequency, like how often do I have to create one of these things and put it out there? Like, do you have any, is there, are there any guidelines or a framework on, on that? So the first thing you need to think about is like, what is your schedule like? Are you posting already three times a week? Are you a seven days a week poster? What is your frequency going to be? And then from there, I would start by, let's say you're posting three times a week. Then I would really encourage you to minimum have a third of that. So one post a week, be a real. And then as you start scaling up, let's say, depending on what your goals are, right? A lot of us are after growth. We're after new followers because we want them to turn into clients or customers. So let's say we're talking about growth, then Reels will certainly, as we mentioned earlier, get you in front of new audiences. And so if you're strategic and the messaging is on, then I would just dial up Reels and keep creating more Reels. as long as they're performing. And by performing, I mean, they don't have to get 10,000, 200,000 views to perform. Some of my best performing reels are less than 10,000 views, 
but they brought in $10,000 clients. So that's the metric we're after. That's the KPI. Absolutely. That I completely agree with that. So yeah, I mean, okay, well, and and also this is making me think, so if we've got kind of a sense of how often um, we want to be showing up and creating reels, but going back to what you'd said earlier is like, it needs to be just a component of your Instagram presence. It doesn't need to be, you're not shifting completely over to doing it's all reels all day. So how do you like, cause I know that many people of my community are confused about like, oh, I just sorted out like stories and like IGTV yeah. and like, there's just so many things. It's really easy. I'm sure you hear this all the time too. It's, it's easy to get overwhelmed because there's so many different like layers and features. So how can people, you know, sort this out, figure out for themselves, what's the right mix and how to create it in a really, so that it's not taking your entire work week. So this is back to the strategy piece and the goal piece. So mm -hmm. what I like to say is depending on where you're at in your business, like what stage or season, let's say, if you are in a really high sales season or you're looking to make a certain goal um, in, in revenue or you want to book X amount of clients out by this amount of time, then you're going to be in a sales kind of season. So you should probably be creating more content more frequently to stay top of mind and keep that algorithm engaged with you. If you are booked out and you are, you know, just keeping your Instagram um, active so that your community keeps you top of mind for when you're ready for your next sales cycle, then post less frequently. And it's totally okay not to use all the features in the app. Now, I will tell you that by using all the features in the app or surfaces like stories, lives, carousels, reels, um, that you will get into more of a positive, uh, call it like a cycle with the algorithm in that it should show your content to more people. And the reason is that Instagram really likes it when we use all of its features, because by creating more content, right, you're creating, you're using more features. So you're creating more content and that content keeps more people inside of the app. And that's the number one thing like YouTube, their KPI internally is YouTube is um, videos watched, minutes watched. And Instagram is very similar. It's time spent in app. Mm, okay. So the, it sounds like the Instagram, like the algorithm really rewards you for using the different features, the different surfaces. Like if you can, so it's not, it wouldn't be an advantage to just like jump completely into all reels and nothing else. You, exactly. you really, the algorithm wants you to, to mix it up and to use all the different features. Yeah. I mean, it's a double-edged sword because if your content is bad or it's not <laughs> talking to your ideal audience and they're not engaging or they're not seeing it, then you're going to, nothing's going to help you grow. You're just going to be stagnant because what the algorithm likes is engagement. So all the engagement we give it sends positive signals to it. And then we get prioritized and ranked and shown to more accounts. Right. Okay. And so I'm also wondering with with reels, like what is, cause we've talked, we talked a little bit about goals, right? Like what is the, what's the goal of the, if you're creating a, a reel, I think you mentioned this before, you want them to, or is it that you want them to get off of the reels section and go and check out your bio? So this is a, we're imagining a new person sees yeah. your reel. Is that the sort of end point goal that we want of the reel? Or, or is there some other way that we can have like a, you know, an, effective endpoint goal for a reel? Yeah, I think there's a few different goals you could have. So one could definitely be to get them to leave reels, head to our profile, give us a follow, go to our website, book a discovery call or buy something. Uh, so that's kind of one goal if that's your, your, your sales or conversion goal. Um, another goal could just be to have them read the caption. So by having them read a caption, then perhaps you are giving them one first impression into your service or your product, or you're giving them value through a value caption that convinces them to tap that like button because the like button or the save or the share, those are also goals 
um, will give a positive signal to the algorithm that our content is worth showing to more people and sh it should be prioritized. And that's how you start racking up more views. If you post a reel and nobody is engaging with it or taking any actions or spending time on it, it's going to get bumped down and it's going to be shown to less people. Mm, okay. That's so good to think about. So really when you're creating the reel right from the beginning, you need to have decided which, what action do you want people exactly. to take? Um, yeah. I mean the, with this, and this is just generally good business principles anyway, this is certainly what I advise people whenever you're creating anything, you need to get, make it super clear. What do you want people to do at the very next step? Right. So, okay. That's, this is, this is so useful. And I know that a lot of my community feel like we said, overwhelmed with, with reels creation, but I love how you've broken it down and like in every way, try to make it it's just as simple and straightforward to just get started. Right. So, I mean, before we wrap up car, I would love to hear all your details about like where people can go to connect with you and, you know, learn more about you and all of that stuff. But before we do that, just any, what, what would be like sort of one or two final takeaways to give um, to our audience, just in terms of how to get started? Like if they haven't dipped their toe in, what's the very first thing to do to get started with this? Yeah, I think the first thing is to just go and binge watch some reels, go get inspired. And my biggest tip is don't go look at your competition. I know a lot of people say, go look at the competition. Absolutely not. Not for this stage. You've already looked at the competition to figure out what your business model is and who you're targeting, right? But now you're going to look at people outside of your niche, outside of your industry, and you're going to go get inspired by them. Look at the fashion influencers. Look at, you know, the home builders. Look at the coaches um, out of your industry and get inspired by how they're using short form video to talk about their services, to tell personal stories, to entertain, to educate, and to sell. So that's how I want you to get started. That's great. That's definitely a doable step. Awesome. Okay, cool. So like I said, before we go, just tell us uh, where we can go to learn more about you and your work and, and then connect with you. Yeah. So come to Instagram. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find me there every day. Yeah. Um, and it's Car Brulehart. It's just my name. My website is also Car Brulehart. And I also will have, there'll be a, a discount code, I think in your show notes for anyone coming and who wants to book any service with me. I have a Power of Reels course. It's an evergreen course that walks you through how to get started with reels. It walks you through how to come up with ideas with reels. It gives you a hundred ideas for your first reel, um, editing transitions. I also go deeper than reels. I go into content strategy, into how to identify your content pillars or refine them if you already have them and how to align those with your business objectives, because that's very confusing for many people. And, um, yeah, you also can do a three-month or six-month coaching package with me if you're looking to really level up and take your content next level. Um, and there's a, a membership that I just dropped that's coming in March, uh, as well as a brand new Instagram growth course that's coming in late March. So lots happening. Um, yeah. And I'd love for you to let me know if you came from the podcast. Send me a message. I respond to all of my DMs, so don't be a stranger. That is so awesome. So many options there. That That's fantastic. Well, everyone definitely needs to go over and I will for sure link um, all of the things that you just mentioned in our show notes and descriptions. So this has been such a pleasure, Car. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of your tips and strategies and ideas. And um, it's just been such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for all your questions. They were so thoughtful and uh, kept me on my toes. So it was really fun <laughs> to talk to you. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Okay, so there you have it. I would love to know your thoughts on using Instagram Reels for your business. Is this something that you have tried yet? And if you haven't and you're hesitating, I would love to know what's holding you back. And I'd also love to know if the tips that Carr shared with us today have helped to break down some of those obstacles and make this whole approach feel a lot less overwhelming. Let me know in the comments if you are watching this on YouTube or go ahead and find me and Carr on Instagram and let us no. Now, I mentioned this in my last couple of episodes, but if you haven't heard me mention it, 
I want to just tell you about my new coming soon membership club that I am so excited about. This is a membership that my team and I are creating and we will be launching very soon. And it's to give you a true community, tons of support and all the business know-how and resources that you need to build and grow a wildly successful wellness business. It's called the Wellness CEO Club. And if this is something that you're interested in, then I want you to add your name to the wait list by following the link in the description box or the show notes. And that way you will be the first to know when all the details become available and I begin launching. Okay. That is a wrap for today. As always, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Have an amazing week and I will see you again very soon. 